Hey guys, uh, uh, welcome uh, to the live today. I think we're doing, uh, today we're gonna do stacking five on five, meaning uh, five properties in five uh, months. So it's not one property at a time. All of the five is are gonna go at the same time. And uh, it's about, as the market is changing, right? A lot of people are uh, finding a challenge where they're like, oh my God, interest rates are up. It's true, rents are up also, but are they in the same proportion with what they're up. So I have uh, Harry with me um, here and we thought, why don't we kind of go through some of these numbers with you? Because I think it will be really, really fun to go through. So what we're gonna do is this. Uh, so all of these properties we're gonna talk about today is uh, all of them are in the North suburbs of uh, Chicago. So these are gonna be A, A plus suburbs and um, all of them are really, really, really good places to own properties, right? So I thought uh, some of them are going to be Airbnbs, some of them are going to be, um, some of them are going to be long-term rentals. So I'm going to talk you through that process as to how to think about this, right? So Harry, welcome. Hey, how are you doing, everybody? So uh, first, uh, Lori, hand this way. So for everybody that is not a member of uh, Burr um, Cash Flow Investors, make sure you become a member. And this is something that, um, you know, we're going to make this happen because this time we're giving for everybody that joins Burr Cash Flow, or if you bring your friend for each person that joins. So if you join, you get one point. If your friend joins, you get one point. What does that point mean? So if you invite 10 people, then you have one point for you and 10 points for everybody you invite. So we put your name in this thing and we have a drawing. Um, which is going to be at the next three day last drawing. Who was it that one? Uh, Trinidad. Trinidad. Uh, uh, Trinidad, not the name of the country. Trinidad, uh, that's his name. He won the appliance set. This time it's a cruise for two. So make sure you uh, you know have your friends join. And here's the fun part about this, right? What we're building up to. And this is something that uh, everybody told me you're, I'm not, but this is something I'm working towards. Each time we're going to figure out to have some sort of a fun giveaway. And what we're building up to is uh, a Mercedes giveaway. That's my goal. That three times a year, that's what I want to do, right? And everybody's like, you're nuts. Why don't you just give it to us? I'm like, no, this is not to you. This is to people who invite a lot of people. And the fun part about that, what we're doing is that, so whoever wins the first time, right? Uh, we're not going to necessarily penalize them, we're going to just start uh, it over because now Trinidad won, he invited a bunch of people, so he already won once. So it doesn't matter if his name is drawn again, his name is drawn again, whoever uh, his name is drawn. So if you invite a bunch of people, you have that many more chances to win, plus your friend gets to have their name in there once if they didn't invite anybody and they're the only one in there. So people who have invited a lot of people uh, will have a statistical higher odds of winning. So this is going to be something fun. Uh, looking forward to it. I can't wait to have that Mercedes parked at the three day with a big bow on it. And hopefully we draw somebody's name and it's something that is um, that you can enjoy. So we're building up to it step by step by step. I'm not there yet, but it's a uh, goal in progress. So having said that, um, and oh, this is the Facebook group, right? I don't know if I said it was a Facebook group or not. Okay. Having said that, back to work. Um, hey, so. Wait, wait. Can I put my name in the drawer for the Mercedes? I mean, dude, you're are you did are you inviting people? Oh yeah. Okay. All right. Good. So then, uh, then you're good, right? So, but yeah. no special treatment just because you work <laughs> with us. So we want to be all fair. Um, okay. So let's talk about these properties. Okay. So interest rates are up, Harry. Right. I mean, obviously that's a fact of life, and a lot of people are like, man, you know, the rates are up. Now what do I do? Right, guys, listen. When the rates were really low, the market was really hot. As the rates go up, the market's going to cool down. One thing we know about real estate, guess what? It's high today. It's going to be low at some point. It's going to be high again at some point. The biggest thing is that you got to keep moving forward. That's the biggest deal is you got to keep the ball moving forward. Okay. So uh, what are you seeing from people? Uh, because obviously you're helping a bunch of people do these loans. What are you seeing? What are the comments you're hearing? Well, um, it's kind of people are thinking it's like a soft buyer's market right now. There's a lot of uh, activity going on right now. Right. So now's the time to actually get in and uh, start submitting your offers. There's okay. a lot of deals out there. And, you know, a lot of times, guys, what happens is, right, especially there's a lot of gurus, right, that are out there. Well, you know, do what I say and not what I do, right? And I 
one thing I don't do is I'm not ever saying something you should do it that I don't do it, right? Um, all Christmas Day, meaning the 23rd, 24th, 25th, uh, 26th, 27th, we were working in the office, I think, uh, and then um, all New Year's, meaning on the 31st and the 1st, I don't know what you were doing, but I was out looking at properties because that's what I believe. If you're going to start out the uh, new year, if you're going to go into the next step, why not? Let's do it right. Right. I mean, to me, taking the day off on the first, this is just me. Makes no sense. Right. If you're going to start out your new year, let's do it with lots of excitement. So you made a lot of appointments for me. Yes. Like some of them we went on together. Mm -hmm. Some of them I went out. Mm -hmm. So I went to close to about uh, 18 or 20 properties. Right. A bunch of them were complete duds. Right. I mean, that's just a fact of life. We went over there, we're, like, ah, yeah. we're walking out. Yeah. But some of them were pure studs. So we made a couple of these properties I had under contract, but how many offers did you make? Um, we made about maybe six or seven offers. Six or seven yeah. offers. And how many got accepted? Three. Well, three. five, actually. We're talking about recently. Yeah, yeah, recently. Three, just yeah, in about the about last three, four days. Three. Three more. Three, three there, yeah. two before, two right? Yeah. So that's a total of five properties, yeah. right? And what is the attitude of agents? Because some of the offers we made were a little bit low offers. Mm -hmm. So what was the attitude you're seeing? Well, they um, they actually, they're saying, that, okay, well, of course they're going to say, let me run it by my um, by my client. Some of them would, you know, ask for highest and best if it's multiple offer situation, depending on the area that you're in. But they're, they're, they're accepting, uh, you know, not bids. bids. They're accepting bids, not low ball offers. They won't, it wouldn't have to be, can't be crazy, but. Yeah, you can make a, a reasonable offer. On, on right. Property. And the reason I'm saying that is uh, that a lot of times people are just scared, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I've been working on a property with one of the REO agents for the last three months, four months, right? I've been calling, 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 calling. Finally, finally uh, uh, this uh, lady uh, calls me back and she's like, you know, Andrew, I think I can get it done. Uh, so my point is, guys, listen, now is the time to be looking and nobody cares, Make a offer which is a little bit lower. Yeah. Uh, that's totally fine, mm -hmm. right? And call the agent before you make the offer. Don't just throw it in and just say, hey, listen, you know, the rates are up, blah, 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 blah. Give them a song and a dance. Everybody's aware of what is going on in the market. Mm -hmm. So the strategy till now, mm -hmm. right? Obviously, I was buying all properties in B markets, meaning Streamwood, Hanover Park, Hoffman Estates, you know, uh, all the middle pocket here around Oak Brook, yeah. right? Uh, southern suburbs. Mm -hmm. What I did last year was I started buying properties in A suburbs, yeah. right? Across the board, there are a little bit higher priced properties uh, for sure, but they're all in A suburbs. And that strategy is continuing because as many as possible for right now, mm -hmm. right? I'm doing them as Airbnbs. So let's go through some of these numbers, okay. right? So I'm going to give you, uh, there's a pen, I think. So um, I'm going to give you these numbers. Right. So just put a uh, property number, just put one. And uh, and then on uh, number one, we'll put, so 170, so I'm going to just give the generic numbers first, okay. right? So all in cost on that is 205. Oh, okay. So just put the all in cost here. Yeah, 205. Second one is uh, 220. Third one is uh, 220. Fourth is 300. This is all in cost, meaning purchase and rehab costs, mm -hmm. right? And number five is uh, 285. Yeah. So, okay. So property number uh, property number one, um, I can do a, a Airbnb on it. So let's just put an A maybe by it. Okay. Yeah. Right. Property number two, you want to just flip the thing around and just, no, no, no. Just, this, oh. Yeah. And just put a red around it. Like I'll just, yeah. There we go. So it will just show up better. Okay. 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 So this one is an Airbnb. Right. Property number two, um, they said that we can't do an Airbnb. So this is going to be a uh, midterm. So if you want to just put like uh, M over there, you know. Um, so this is going to be a midterm rental. Mm -hmm. Property number three is going to be a Airbnb. Property number four, Airbnb, and property number five, Airbnb. Okay. 
Okay. So basically, out of the five properties, this one is an Airbnb, this one is an Airbnb, this one is an Airbnb, this one is going to be... And the reason I'm doing five, I mean, I have about, I think, eight, 18, 19, 20. So I think including, it's be about 22 open projects or 23 open projects going as we speak. We're just talking about five because it's easier to make sense of, right? So now with this, so if you think about, so 200, 220, 220, that's 440, mm -hmm. that's 605 plus four, so about 645, mm -hmm. uh, 900 mm -hmm. and another about 300. So you're talking about 1.2 uh, million bucks or so. Right. So this was my point, right? Uh, that uh, we were talking about it and uh, I was like, man, interest rates are up, right? And he's uh, Harry's handling a lot of the financing nowadays um, doing the paperwork, I'm like, I don't know, I'm conflicted, you know, should I just pay cash on a lot of, because I just did a refi on a bunch of the properties mm -hmm. that I had done. So I had the money to be able to pay for it. But your point was what? Yeah, why pay cash? Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, just like for me, I know I don't have a million dollars just to kind of throw at properties. Right. And this guy does, but at the same time, why do it? You can do more by, you know, using hard money. You can right. And the other thing is, guys, listen, as the market is changing, right, beat me, beat you, right? For you, think about it. If you're doing one property, that may be a big deal. That's where I started, right? My goal was I wanted to get to three properties at a time. If I could do three houses at a time, you know, I was like, man, now, right? I, I'm big time, right? I am big time, yeah. right? And you got and what going on now, 20... 20 something, I think, yeah. right? And it's, it's funny because I'm like, oh, my God, are we forgetting a house that was bought, yeah. right? I mean, it's obviously it's a different position to yeah. be in today. <laughs> but my point being is that it doesn't matter where we are, right? Like, it was a month and a half, two months ago, um, I had bought way too many properties for cash, way too many, the office, all the stuff, right? And I'm like, oh, my God, I'm running out of cash, right? When you have millions of dollars out there in all these properties and I'm just writing checks for all the construction in Florida, all the construction up here. It's not that you don't have money, but as a business person, when you tie up two, three, four million dollars in cash, right? This is not, it's better to be in a cash position in the bank today because given kind of where we are in the market, right? What if they kick up the interest rates a little bit more? What if the economy hitches for a little bit? It's always better to have more cash reserves and put these on a loan, even on a loan on the front end, because it doesn't make sense to have your cash tied up. Because even if I have all of these out there that are basically, let's just say, right? Let's just say they kick up the interest rate, right? You have a, more companies that go collapse on crypto, something, the market goes weird for a bit, right? We know that has happened from time to time, right? That happened uh, when Corona happened, right? That happened back in 2008. Now, it was all short-lived during Corona, but we never want to take it for granted that just because today uh, I have money, I don't want to put it out there and then put, you know, feel bare naked, meaning now you have all this money tied up yeah. in the properties, right? Yeah, don't do that. Yeah. So basically, if we think about all of these properties, mm -hmm. right, let's look at some numbers. So approximately, this is about a total of uh, a million two or so, two. right, Ball ballpark, yeah. right? Now, in something like this today, for somebody with experience, what is the kind of rates we're talking about on the front end? On the front end. Uh, and then on the back end, we'll talk about it here in a minute. Mm -hmm. What is the rates on the front end for hard money? For hard money, uh, for, on the front end, for a fix and flip, you can get as low as 9.99 right now. 9.99. Or uh, I mean, this is going to be a bridge loan because a bridge loan. I'm not selling them on the back end. I'm going to refi it, but it's okay. the same thing, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and then how much down in terms of uh, purchase price, okay. how much down payment? For experienced investor, 10% down. For unexperienced investors? Maybe 15%. 15%, okay. 15%. So basically, so like this property, this is being bought for uh, 170, right? That's the purchase price on this one. Right. It's 170 purchase price, about 30, 35 in rehab. Right. Um, and 210, uh, right? Um, so yeah. like this one, uh, the back end value on that one is going to be uh, you said what 350 or so? Um, 130. Yeah, yeah, that's about uh, yeah. So th yeah. 350 is what I have in my notes, right? Mm -hmm. And guys, listen so if this property uh, was located, say, in the southern suburbs of Chicago, right? Uh, maybe I'd be buying it for 
say anywhere from 90,000 to 110, 115, yeah. right? Then I'd be putting in say 25, 30. Mm -hmm. So now 115, let's say buy 30 uh, into it. I'm in the deal for about 140. Mm -hmm. Now I'm looking for a back end value somewhere around 200, right. right? Here, it just happens to be in an area, the numbers are a little bit higher, mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, the math remains the same, mm -hmm. right? And my calculation is if I'm gonna do a rental on this, Right. I want to make every month minimum of five to six hundred dollars and not have any money tied in this deal. Right. So basically, so let's just take property number one. And if you want to just move that over. Right. Uh, and let's just go through kind of what kind of money I would have to come out of pocket. Okay. Right. So um, so let's just say on 205. I'm uh, sorry. On 170. Right. So on 170, uh, I'd need 10% down, mm -hmm. right? So that's going to be approximately 17,000 bucks, right. right? So if you want to put maybe 17 over there, we'll just put the okay. numbers here, right? Mm -hmm. So down payment about 17,000. Now, as on top of that, mm -hmm. um, I have a about a $35,000 rehab budget, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, so if you want to just put that uh, rehab and then just uh, 35,000. Right. So on thirty five thousand, um, how much money would I have to come out of pocket? They, they will cover one hundred percent of the thirty five thousand. Right. right. So I want to be careful with this. That's why I want to explain this. So they will cover they'll give you hundred percent on the rehab here. They'll give you 90 percent. Mm -hmm. But the problem with this is this. Right. That I have to do, say, 10 or 15 in work. And then they reimburse me the money. So it's done in draws, right? So don't, I mean, I'm, I want to explain this. So basically what happens is this. If I had, let's say, paid cash for it, right? Completely cash. Uh, then I would have to have about 1.2 million, right? If I went to mastery for it. Now forget about, let's just assume, me, let's assume it's uh, Harry, right. right? Goes to mastery. Can he get a loan from mastery at 2.1% uh, a month? All day long, yeah. right? He We'll let him take maybe one loan at a time, maybe if it's a really good deal too. Right. But the other three properties, he would either have to wholesale or he would have to let go of those properties, right? Because he's like, because we're gonna say, hey, Harry, man, you're not gonna go, mastery money is not meant tie to up, be yeah. tie up in what five properties. What if Harry gets himself in trouble somewhere? What if a property gets stuck? We wanna be careful with uh, mastery money, mm -hmm. right? So that's not possible. Now, also, could, with hard money, you get longer terms. Too. Longer terms, exactly. Yeah. What is the term on the money for hard money? 12 months minimum. You 12 months minimum, up to 18, up to 18 months, months or so, months. right? Yeah. Okay. So that's why I wanted to explain that, that for some people, right, you have funds. And if you have funds, sometimes hard money makes more sense, yeah. right? Going to one of the hedge funds, going to Harry, it makes more sense because it gives you some options. So if you're from Mastery, do one loan from Mastery. Or, you know, and then start borrowing money from outside because it makes more sense. It gives you more flexibility, right? So on this property, I would have to come up with, let's just say 10 or 15, do one draw and then do a second draw. Now, I generally don't do any draws at all. That's just me. I prefer it that way. Uh, but most people will do uh, one draw and then they'll do a second draw, right? I just basically pick up the 90% on this end and I just pay for it up front. I don't do any draws most of the times. I'll just do a complete refi and be done with it. Uh, it's just, there are too many properties going on for me to keep doing these draws. But generally, if you have, how much liquidity would you need to operate here? You'd say about another extra 20,000 bucks? another 20, maybe 25, yeah. 20, 25, right? So let's just put, uh, put R and put uh, 20 over there, right? Now, you got to think about one more thing here. So... This was the money for down payment. This was the money for liquidity that you needed to do the rehab in this case, right? Now you need a little bit more funds. This is, we're talking about when you're getting ready to close, right? Because uh, if you say, all I have is barely 37,000 bucks, they're gonna say, ah, no, you're not a good candidate for the loan, yeah. right? Uh, you're gonna need a little bit more. How much more do you need? Um, closing cost, um, reserves. You probably would need another... Say six, eight thousand, or maybe ten, maybe 10, 10, 10, 10 thousand to be safe. About ten thousand. So yeah. you want to put ten? 
Okay, so basically if we go 17 plus 20, that's 37, 37 plus 10, that's gonna be about $47,000, right? 47, so, 50, yeah. so let's just say 47 there, right? Mm -hmm. So about right, $47,000 in this case, out of which you'd be putting up about 20, about 25 or so mm -hmm. you know, on the front end with closing costs, does that, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. The rest of it is for payments, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And this money is going to go back and forth, right? So if you had that, um, that sort of a reserves or that sort of money, mm -hmm. you could do one with a, um, you know, with a hedge fund. Yeah. So for me, instead of having to put up 1.2 million cash out of pocket, mm -hmm. right? I can do five properties with bulk. Now, obviously, some are a little bit more, some are a little bit less. So with ballpark 50,000 each on about three properties, two of them are a little bit more expensive. Mm -hmm. So on those, maybe I'd have to come up with 70, 75,000, right? Mm -hmm. But still with 150 on three, meaning 50, 50, 50, mm -hmm. and then say another 75, 75. So for instead of having to come up with 1.2 million, I can do four or five properties with only $300,000, yeah. right? Uh, and I'm saying that, guys, only because I realize, right? Mind you, I've been doing this since 2008, right? Keep that in mind, right? So a lot of times when you compare uh, yourself to somebody, you got to keep that in mind. We are all on a journey, right? Think about it as a long hike. Both of us are on the same hike. Maybe I just started a little bit earlier. That's all it is. Nobody is in front or nobody's behind. It's just we are all on a journey. That's all this is. So in this case, right, to do five properties, I would need about, in this particular situation, about $300,000 out of pocket, but then I can turn five properties. Now I have another six or eight or 12 already going. Right. They're already in the way that some of them are being refinanced out. They're going to a rental portfolio. Once it goes to a rental portfolio, I don't count them because they're done. They're gone or they're Airbnb out. Then the performance on this doesn't count. So I want to do about 25 to 30 transactions at any given time, live transactions that are moving through the system. That's how I want to do them. And to do that many transactions, I need to have like with similar ratios, right? I need to have some of them I own for complete cash. Some of them I have put this sort of financing on them, you know? So I need to have a liquidity of say three and a half, four or five million at a time to be able to turn that all the time. And it's gonna uh, kind of base it on where you are in your investing, right? So now once this is done, these are gonna get refinanced. So let's look at the numbers on the back end, right? So if you wanna maybe move this, let's just do this, maybe put, all in cost here, mm -hmm. uh, back end value here, and cash flow will put it over there. Okay. Right. So property number one um, is an Airbnb. Right. So all in cost was two hundred five. Okay. So one two hundred five. Um, back end value three fifty. And then um, th in the end uh, on Airbnb, so here's my calculation, guys. Here's how I'm calculating if it makes for a good Airbnb or if it makes for a good um, good uh, long-term rental, right? right? Excuse me, um, mid-term yes. rental. So what is, you know the difference between an Airbnb, what we call Airbnb or short-term rental versus a mid-term? Midterm has to be at least uh, 30, 30 days, days yeah. right? So midterm, so here's the three options. Till now, since 2011 till literally last year, everything I was buying was predominantly for long-term rentals. So every property long-term rental that I own, right? You're going to make a minimum of 500 bucks net cash flow. And I would consider it a good home run deal if I have 25 to 30% minimum equity, right? Um, on top of that, if I have zero deal, zero money out of pocket, meaning after I do the refinance, I didn't want to have any money out of pocket, right? And then I want to have five to six to seven hundred dollars net cash flow after all expenses, right? That to me is a home run deal. That's where we categorize that as a home run deal. Something a little bit below that, if I have a little bit money in, um, let's say I have ten thousand dollars invested in the property, phenomenal property, huge amount of equity, but still, then I would call it a very good deal. Right. Meaning a home run is like, oh, my God, it's out of the ballpark. Don't even you know talk about it. Then it's like a very good deal. And it's a good deal. Generally, if you're making 40, 45, 50 percent cash on cash and that is doable, guys, in today's market, like even in today's market with today's interest rates, 
If you're putting 20% down, especially, right? Yeah. I mean, eyes closed, you can do 50, 55, 60% cash on cash. Easy. Right? Easy, easy. And this is in the Chicago market. This is in Central Florida or Southwest Florida market. Even today, you can do that, right? But anyways, I digress. So the kind of the distinction is this, that if I'm doing a short-term rental, I want to make, sorry, a long-term rental, I want to make a minimum of five to $700,000. And um, 700,000, <laughs> sorry, $500 to $700 a month. So $500 is for small properties. This will be considered a smaller property because my all-in cost is 200, 205, yeah. right? If this property was say, uh, my all-in cost was 300, my all-in cost was 320. Now, generally, it's going to be in a, even a more expensive area. We have some of those, right? And it's going to be probably a little bit bigger roof, a little bit more toilets in the house. So there, I'm not satisfied with only $500 a month. I want to make at least $700 a month. Why? Because it's a little bit bigger house. I should get more performance on it. So that's my base metrics, right? Then the second thing is, if I'm going to do a uh, Airbnb, I want to make at least minimum of two and a half to three times net cash flow compared to a regular rental, right? So the reason behind that is because with the Airbnb, you're going to have a lot of people in and out. You're going to have some expenses to furnish the property. You're going to have other additional frictional expenses that you're going to run into. So you should make more property and this is more money. And this is without me managing the property at all, period. Right. This is after paying a management fee, after all of those things. Right. So I want to make at least three times. So in this particular property, based on the numbers, and here's the generic numbers, right? On the back end, what would be the interest rate right now? Um, the floor is six point eight two five right now. No man, get out of here. The floor is floor. No, no, no. But down to it, but but uh, yeah, but but regular, regular. I'm getting about eight point one two five. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like yeah. realistic. Without paying, without, without paying anything. Down or anything. Right. So about 8.125 is what you're going to get minimum, right? Uh, you're not going to get much lower than that unless you start doing $20,000, $30,000 buy downs, which right. doesn't, make sense, doesn't make sense, right? So at 8.1%, the taxes on this property are somewhere around $4,800 to $5,200. Mm -hmm. Now, it's in a high A area. What do I mean by that? It's northern suburbs of Chicago, good schools, very desirable areas to live in, right? On a three-bedroom, one-bath ranch, all day long, I know I can get $2,300 or so? Yeah. $2,300, yeah. $2,400. Yeah. Now think about this, right? If I get $2,300, $2,400 with interest rate, with uh, taxes, with insurance, with everything, my payments are going to be damn near close to almost $2,000. Why? Because the interest rate is high today, right? So what do I do? I'm not going to buy the property? No. I know this is going to be a good Air Airbnb because they allow Airbnbs over here. So here, my net cash flow on an Airbnb is going to be somewhere around, excuse me, gross is going to be somewhere around about $4,200 to forty to $5,000, right? So about $4,200. So here's how I look at it. I'm like, okay, on an Airbnb, what are going to be my additional expenses? 20% of that is going to be gone for management, the people who manage the Airbnbs for me. Mm -hmm. Then on top of that, uh, I'm going to lose some because now here I got to pay for utilities, Right. So I'm going to consider about 350 additional utility. So now my payment goes from two thousand dollars and I'm taking a generic payment of about two thousand, maybe eighteen fifty, whatever. You guys get my point. Right. So I'm somewhere around, say, twenty two hundred now, twenty two hundred plus another um, six, seven hundred dollars based on performance. So let's say we collect four thousand dollars in total Airbnb fees. I think we're going to collect way more, but that's what it is. So you take uh, twenty percent of four thousand bucks. What's that going to be? Right, that's going to be eight hundred bucks a month. So eight hundred plus twenty two hundred, three grand is gone. But I know, given on the performance in this particular area, every single month, approximately, I'm going to make from a thousand to fifteen hundred. So you want to put just like, let's just do like sort of twelve fifty. We'll just split it, right? So twelve fifty on this one. Mm -hmm. So. At this point, because the value is this high, I'm not going to have any money in the property. Now, in one month, maybe I'll only make 800. In another month, maybe I'll make 1800. You got to average that out, right? You're not going to have it exactly the same every time. So, on the second one, all in cost, we have 220. Back end value, 280. 
And uh, this one is going to be a uh, oh, this one they do this allow one. Airbnb. Uh, yeah, they, they do allow Airbnb. Right. So this one. So here's the thing. This one is being bought for the purchase price is two hundred five, mm -hmm. right? As far as the um, rehab in the property, I don't need any rehab in the property, right? Um, but what's going to happen on this particular property is um, I'm going to need to furnish it out because of Airbnb. That cost is not calculated. So I'm going to have about a $10,000, $12,000 extra expenses. Just understand that, that I'm going to have that. Now at 280, I'm not going to be able to refinance 100% of my cost out, right? I know that. So at 280, what's going to happen is this. Uh, it's going to be 280 times 0.75. So I'm going to be able to refinance about 210. Mm -hmm. So in this deal, if I was a betting man, I would say reasonably, I'm going to end up having about, about $20,000 to $25,000 invested in the property. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. We know the numbers in that area. I know I can net out in this particular area all day long. $1,800 on an Airbnb, right? So you want to put down $1,800 over there? Now, mind you, so this is something that when you're doing Airbnbs and uh, when you're doing the Airbnbs in boring markets, boring markets meaning markets like, you know, suburbs of Chicago, Detroit, whatever it is, wherever you live, there are pockets where everyday people need places to move to. Their house burned down. Something happened. They're coming to the area for... Um, you know, to visit family, traveling nurses, all these things, right? Today, people, rather than going to a hotel, they would rather, if three or four people are coming, it's much more economical to stay in a Airbnb, bread and butter, boring little Airbnb house where you're charging, say, $250, $300 a night. Because at a hotel, you have two, three people, you get three rooms, that's going to be way more expensive. And all you're getting is a room. Right? You don't get the functionality, the kind of the uniqueness of being in a small property and in high A areas, right? It makes all the sense in the world. Now, even in some of the challenging areas, people are killing it with these Airbnbs. But what if this town changes the rules? Is that possible? That happens. Yeah. That happens, yeah. right? Yeah. That happens. So you got to think about it whenever you're doing this. You can't look at this as a lottery ticket that's going to come in forever. It's coming in today, right? So it makes sense to buy in really, really exceptionally good areas. Because why? Well, you can double down and pay off your properties at a very high pace, right? What do we do real estate for? We do real estate for number one is cash flow. Number two is having massive amounts of equity because that's what builds net wealth, right? So number three. Now, this one, as a rental, eh, not very exciting, right? This would be a rental like most people would do it. They're like, well, you know, I have this rental. Mm -hmm. I really don't make any money. I don't lose money either, right. right? This would be like kind of a, not that I would ever sell it, mm -hmm. right? Because I can afford to own it, but it's not really a money maker, mm -hmm. right? So this is not an ideal rental by our standards, right? Because with our standards, we want zero money in. We want all this cash flow. We want a huge amount of equity. So this is not the best regular long-term rental. This works great as a short-term Airbnb. It works great as a mid-term also. Mm -hmm. Now, number three. Okay. So number three is going to be uh, 210 plus, uh, plus 10. So 220. So, uh, Backend is about 290 to 300. So let's just use 290. Now, this one is going to be a hybrid. So this one is not going to be a regular rental. This is not going to be a uh, short-term rental. This is going to be a mid-term rental, meaning this is going to be... Um, so here's what happened in this particular situation was that in this particular area, there's a lot of hospitals, right? It's a really good area. There's a lot of pharmaceutical companies in this area. So if you guys are from Chicago, and if you're, and there's a reason why I'm not generally we're happy to give out the addresses we're generally and i'm not doing this because what happens is mastery has grown to a point today that everybody's going to go to just these four suburbs oh andrew said this so i'm just going to go there and everything's going to go nuts right i'm pretty much laying out the cards here for you right but in this area you have a lot of pharmaceutical companies 
You have a lot of um, you know companies where uh, there's a high amount of employment. It's not Cook County, right? So you guys can pretty much put it together what that is. Right. So um, here you have a lot of people that are willing to do corporate housing, and you have a lot of insurance companies where they don't have anything that is furnished where if a family has a house that burns down, something happens to the property, blah, blah, right? Insurance companies are desperate to find properties where they can sign three, four, five month leases. They're not gonna sign six, a year lease. So they need what is called a midterm lease, meaning 30 days or more or 30 days. Um, sometimes it's three months, four months, six months, eight months, and they will pay 30, 35, 40% above the rental market. And here's the cool part. Now, it's not like an Airbnb. You have one person moves in, stays there for a long period of time, and then they move out. You don't have to go put in toilet supplies. You don't have to go provide all this stuff each week. Initially, you have a week, week and a half, two weeks worth of supplies, and that's it. So if they stay there six, eight months, you're not sending a cleaning crew there all the time. You're not doing any of those things because they're living there as their home. So on that one, uh, the numbers, and these are solid numbers, the net cash flow is somewhere around $8,000. You see 1000 $1,000. Right? So here I assumed I would have about 20 to 30 in. Here I'm assuming I'm going to have similar 20 to 30 in. Right? And we're going to do a performance chart on all of this put together. Number four. So number four is 270 plus 30. So all in cost about 300. Back end value all day long in this area is about 415. And in this particular area, given these numbers, this is going to be a Airbnb, yeah. right? That one, um, I'm very, 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 very confident at somewhere around 2000 net after expenses. Okay, so, and then let's do number five. Number five is, uh, this one is a more expensive one. 250 plus 35, so 285 all in. Right, um, and uh, back end number on something like this, this is gonna be like 450 or something like that. So let's just put it at like 430. So somewhere over there, okay? So this one, zero money in, this one about 25, 30,000, this one about 25, 30,000, this one zero, and this one zero. Mm -hmm. So uh, over over here, cash flow similar like the, uh, yeah, like that one, 2,000. So conservatively, it's, here's what happens, right? 2,000, 2,000, 5,000, 5,000 plus um, 8, those 000, two. 8,000, 50 dollars. 8, $8, yeah. That's what it is? Yeah. Two, four, five, six, seven, thousand, that's eight. Okay, all right. So yeah. 8,250. So 8,250, yeah. right? Yeah. And now, if I put, so put 60,000. So on 60,000 invested, you're making. 8,000, let's just make it 8,000 rather than 8,000 times 12. Mm -hmm. You're making 96,000 a year. On 60,000 invested. On 60,000 invested, right? Now, some people I know, I mean, if you're one of those people who's a pessimist, you're going to go, well, but Andrew, you know, you had to put up 300,000 initially to make 96,000 bucks. I'm like, guys, listen, I did because I was ambitious to try to do five properties at once. What if you were just doing one at once? Is that okay? Maybe what if you were just doing two at once, right? That's okay still. But my point being is in this case, now these properties, right? They're a little bit different. They're a little bit different, meaning that uh, the market has changed, right? Airbnb has come into play, which we did not have in this amount two, three, four years ago. The right. awareness of the public was not there. So each time, and guys, I am a big believer in this. Anybody who doesn't believe it, you don't want to be a part of this channel or what we believe. My belief is this. We are better off today financially as a society. We have more tools to make money than we had in 2000, than we had in 85, than we had in 55, than we had in 1930s. As the technology progresses, there are more and more and more 
technical things that come into the market, right? Here's the problem though, right? A lot of people are like, well, you know, but Andrew, a lot of people disenfranchised. A lot of people don't know how to do all of this. Guys, listen, today the market is more competitive than it has ever been. But in terms of making money, if you know how to use your brain, right? There is more money to be made today than there has ever been, right? You could never, my parents could have never imagined, right? And even today, most normal people, right? Cannot imagine that on $60,000 investment, all done within a four, five, six month period that on the back end, you could literally make somewhere from 85 to $90,000 a year, right? I mean, think about that. That is a ridiculous return. Now, this requires effort. This is no Bitcoin, right? This is not like, well, I'm just gonna buy a Bitcoin. It's gonna become worth $2 million. I bought it for 10, God bless you, right? I mean, I hope you do it. I hope you teach classes and you can show me how to do it in a repeatable manner. I have loads of money where I can put it in the those things, but I don't want any risk. The problem is anything where you don't have to do anything, it comes with high risk. This is something which is very duplicatable. Now let's think about the worst case scenario. So Harry, let's just say in every single place, mm -hmm. all five of them, Andrew, all of Illinois decides no more Airbnbs. Right. What do I do? You can long-term rental, turn right to a long-term rental. If you want to. End of story. End of story. Right? End of story. And is all of them will become a long-term rental. Yeah. Will they make a big buttload of money? No. But guess what? They make okay money, mm -hmm. right? Am I happy with it? Sure, right? Because if I have to turn all of these into long-term long, long rental properties, how many other people do you think they're going to have to do it? And what I'm going to do is double down, rent these out, and boom, start buying a bunch of properties, which I know other people won't be able to afford mm -hmm. because they can't carry those properties, right? My point of all of this was that as the market changes, there are opportunities that show up. What we have to do, and mind you guys, there have been missteps. One, the property in Florida, every single month is making after expenses, each side of the unit, meaning the duplexes, mm -hmm. right? Each of them make about $1,500 per side. Nice. So if it's a duplex, you're getting 3,000 bucks, you have zero in the deal, right? Um, the property is here, right, uh, that I have. Every month, consistently, it's making after expenses, Right after all expenses, it's making anywhere from fifteen hundred to about twenty two, twenty three hundred dollars net. Right now, having said that, you know what happened to me on the property in Melrose Park. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So we bought a property in Melrose Park. I bought actually you found it. Mm -hmm. right? I buy the property, and I'm like, okay, that's that's fine. My beautiful little house. Melrose Park calls me just before uh, we almost had all the furniture in there. They're like, well, you know, it's a thousand dollar fine. If you do an Airbnb, oops, bought the furniture, had to move it, right? Now, did I know before uh, we started this? Yes. It was like, you know, wink, wink and look the other way sort of thing. So it's not the market's fault. It's not the town's fault. It's my fault, right? I pushed it and guess what? Wasn't able to do it, right? And they're like, Andrew, you of all people, you know, should know this. I'm like, well, I should. My bad. You know, what are you going to do? You're not going to hit every single time home runs when you know you're pushing the limit. So that's kind of what it is. So what about you? You're going to do some, you looking for any Airbnbs? Oh, yeah. Definitely looking for some Airbnbs. Definitely looking. Yeah. Okay. All right. Good. Yeah. Before, I mean, before everything changes, because, you know. Yeah. Because, guys, listen, this is, again, from time to time, there are wide gaps in markets that come up. You have to know right now when this works this is a beautiful thing right over time understand it's like anything else market will change so what you do is you prepare you take advantage of it you bank all this cash you don't go spend it right this is the biggest thing is you can't go start spending that cash because guess what happens if sometimes say three years from now four years from now five years from now we don't know right if they change the ordinances they go hey no 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 there's too many airbnbs we don't want it for whatever reason. It's okay. You have made a lot of money. You still own good quality real estate. It's cash flowed like no tomorrow. Pay down the loans, refinance them at a lower rate, mm -hmm. right? 4%, 5%. And guess what? Yeah. 
They will cash flow like no tomorrow and your net worth has grown. So hopefully uh, you found that of some value, you know, because it's a little bit different type of thought process. Again, if you're not a member of uh, Burke Cashflow uh, Investors uh, Facebook group, make sure you become a member. Like I said, this time the giveaway for you or anybody that you invite, if your name is drawn, uh, the giveaway is um, a trip for two, uh, a cruise uh, that we are giving away. And eventually we're build, building up to giving away a Mercedes three times a year. That's the goal that we're building up to each time with prize money. And it's a pure uh, bribe from my end mm -hmm. to build the whole group yeah. to be a massive group where we can all bring massive value. There is no sale, there's no pitch. It's just bringing ideas and thoughts and all of us as a community growing our businesses. Yeah. Harry, man, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. For uh, joining. Guys, talk to you guys soon.